So we have selected the data we want from our response using the CSS selectors. And now what we can do is extract the data out. Now, of course, we have already done that using the get method. That is using the CSS selector, we just make a selection, which is this right here. And then when we want the data, we use the get method to extract the data from that selection. Now it's all good. That is we have extract the data in two different variables. That is the title and the price. And then we have printed that on the terminal, which is of course fine, but we cannot perform any operations on the same because it is in the terminal. That is, let's say what I want to do is find out the maximum price from our products, but I cannot do that because it is in the terminal. So in this lesson, we will see how can we extract the data that is our scraped data into a separate file so that we can perform any operations on the same later on. To do that, Scrapey got us covered here as well. That is, as I mentioned before, extracting the data is also handled by Scrapey. The only thing we have to do is give the data to Scrapey. And to do that, we have to return the data from our parse function and Scrapey will take that data and output it to a different file, which we can tell when we are scraping the spider. So here, instead of printing the title and price, what we can do is just return our value. But because here we have a lot of files and Scrapey prefers to use generator functions instead of normal returns. That is, we will yield a value of the title and the price. That is, let's say, I'll create a dictionary where we will have the title and then the title is equals to the title value. And then we will have another key value payer that is the price, which will be equals to the price like this. Now here we will return multiple values or generate multiple values using the yield keyword so that our parse functions generate different ebooks data. Now, if you're familiar with the Python generators or the yield syntax, then you will know what it means here. But if you're not familiar with the same, let's see what it is. So here I have opened a Python REPL that is a Python session. And here I have a list that is ebooks in which we have some product titles so that we can simulate our parse function. So here we will just define a simple parse function like this in which we will just go ahead and run a for loop on the ebooks that is we will get a ebook in of ebooks and then what we will do is first of all just print the ebook which we did earlier so now if i go ahead and hit enter and then let's say i'll just create a output variable to get the output from our parse function so parse like this you can see that we get the titles printed on the terminal but if i inspect the output variable it is nothing because nothing is stored in the output because we are not returning any value so instead what we can do is just define the parse function again where what we can do is just return the value instead of printing it so ebook in the ebooks we will just return the ebook like this. Now if I do that and run the output that is we will store the output of the parse again parse like this. You can see we don't get the data printed on the terminal because we returned it and stored it inside of our output variable. So if I inspect the output you can see we only get one output that is a light in the attic that is the first value inside of our ebooks that is this right here so when we return the data from our parse function what it does is cancels or terminates the execution of our function now this is a basic of python functions and if you don't know that this is the case that is in a function if we have a return statement then the function is terminated as well and in this case we run a for loop and in the first loop we return this value and after returning that the function terminates as well that's why this output only has the first title from our ebooks so in this case what we can do is create a generator function instead that is we will return multiple values or yield multiple values to do that we need to replace the return keyword 
with the yield keyword. So we can define the parse function again, parse, and then run the for loop. That is ebook in the ebooks. And now instead of return, we will use the yield keyword like this. Now we will yield the same value which we did before, that is ebook like this. And now if I create the output and call our parse function like this, Again, we don't get any output in the terminal because we didn't use the print function. But if I inspect the output variable, you will see it is a generator. Now what I can do is just run a for loop on our output like this. That is a item in the output. We will just print the item so that we can see what it is. And it will be all the titles inside of our eBooks. So that's how we create a generator expression or a generator function with the yield keyword in Python. Of course, this is just the basics of the Python generator functions and the yield syntax. If you want to learn more about the same, then you can check out my Python 3.10 course in which we go more deeper in this subject, that is the Python generator functions, the yield keywords, the list comprehensions, and etc. But for now, we know what generator functions are. And we will use the same in our spider, that is we will yield multiple values that is a dictionary of the title and the price so let's go ahead and run our spider so let's use the scrapey crawl command and we want to crawl our spider that is ebook now let's wait for it to finish and then we'll get all of the items printed on the terminal again because here you can see that we have all the dictionaries of the different items. That is, we have a title here and its price. We have another title and its price. Again, we have all the data only in our terminals. So get, to get it inside of a different file, what we have to do is specify that when we are crawling the spider. So when we are crawling our spider, we have to specify the output as well. That is the scraped data needs to be outputted or exported to a different file, which is done using the hyphen O flag and the name of our file. That is, we want to specify an output with the hyphen O flag and then that output file name, which be, let's say we have ebooks.json like this. So we will run our spider, that is ebook, and then all of the scraped data, which is yielded from this line right here we will just store that and extract it inside of a ebooks json which we specify here using the hyphen o flag now if i go ahead and run the scraper again it will run and scrape all of the data we will see the data here as well that is the dictionaries with the different titles and the price now if we check our explorer you will see we have a file inside of our our project directory that is inside of the ebook scraper project we have a file called ebooks json and if i take a look inside of the same you will see we have all of the data so this is how we extract the data from our spiders so if we want to extract the scraped data as well then we can just use the o flag inside of our crawl command like this to just get our scrape data extracted into a separate file like this ebooks.json.